Thank you for letting me join the meeting. Um, today is a difficult day for me because I fundamentally believe in not increasing council tax unless and until there is a case and you absolutely have to. Uh, and you know, with um, careful planning at East Kansas District Council, we've managed a, a nil percent rise for four years and we're freezing council tax for the next two years. So we have gone six years, uh, we will have gone six years with, with no rise. Um, things are very different for upper tier authorities. The challenges are much greater. We have an absolute duty of care to support the most vulnerable in our society, so it's a very different picture. We know the unfair funding situation that we are in. We are not bleating about, as to use another councillor's words, uh, asking for more money. We are asking for a fair funding situation and a fair playing field. And we all know the reality that if we had a fair funding situation, we wouldn't need to be sitting here discussing rises in the council. That's, that's the reality. Um, I would like to remind uh, the public uh, and members of this committee uh, that uh, opposition members in the past refused to support the significant transformation programme that was put forward by um, worked up um, between our party and officers uh, and the opposition blocked that last time round, blocked it as it went through the committee structure, blocked it at full council, refused to support it and I want to say today a huge thank you to all the staff at this authority who have driven those transformation pro proposals through. They are making significant differences to our ability to continue and to sustain services at a, a, what we know now, at average levels, we know that we have a very low cost to serve uh, in adult social care and we are maintaining uh, um, really good uh, responses back from our public and people who use our services uh, and we know that benchmarking we, we are retaining our services and good outcomes for people uh, and that's thanks to the hard work of officers who have driven that through um, and in people and communities alone in that directorate we have um, driven out 20 million pounds of savings by probably by year end it's heading towards that figure about 18 and a half million at the moment. Uh, if we hadn't done that, we would be facing a very serious situation indeed here today. We've got six and a half million pound pressure. That, that figure would be 26 and a half million pounds if we hadn't taken the decisions that we took a year ago that were not supported by the opposition. That's, that's thanks to uh, this administration that those things have happened. The money and the proposal that is on the table by the Conservatives is not for rainy day money. It is absolutely not, not that. I agree with Councillor Jenkins. We're not in a rainy day situation. It's about carefully planning for the medium term to make sure that we can get over this um, situation that we are in. And yes, we can all put forward proposals to blow that additional money on day one, and that is not what we're going to do. It's not a responsible attitude whatsoever. We have to very carefully prioritise what we're doing with the funding and the money. And we know that we are capped in how much money can be raised in the future, and that's why we need to carefully plan this year uh, and for the future. And we, need, we have a £22 million inherent risk in our transformation programme that we have to uh, have a reserve to call upon. And that is the responsible thing to do, to make sure that, that you know, we can continue to deliver and to continue to transform. <coughs> to answer Joan's difficulty with wording, Joan, there are many, um, many different ways that we support to try and get people <clears throat> out of hospital. We are putting in huge effort into dealing with delayed transfers of care. Our numbers have come down. We all know the pressures we're facing at the moment. We've seen over the winter, uh, last few <coughs> winter weeks, we've seen um, on average 100 uh, referrals from Addenbrooks uh, is the normal average coming out of Addenbrooks coming in to need adult social care services. That's gone up by 50% to 150 now. Whilst 50 people may not sound like massive amounts in terms of 650,000 population. A system that is already under strain, that is an enormous, enormous increase. Um, but we are um, putting huge measures in, there's many ways to deal with that situation and, and residential places, whatever you want to call them, is not, not the, only, the only answer. Uh, we have, um, we've planned to put in 100 extra reablement staff our workforce at the moment is to around 250, so you can see that's a sizable increase. Now, recruiting those staff in a Cambridgeshire that has uh, very low levels of unemployment and high wages, relatively speaking, uh, is a challenge in itself, and we have to make the recruitment offer more attractive. 
Uh, we're having 23 roving home care cars that can go around the county in a sort of, not emergency fashion, but quickly, uh, and discharge people from the hospital, get them out, provide support. Uh, we're having an, we are having an expansion of interim beds uh, and better use of, a, of the accommodation that we have available. We're setting up 14 care flats, exactly really, I think what you were trying to suggest. That is already happening and going in. We, our new home care contract um, is resulting in more providers. We've got much more flexibility in the home care market. We've still got gaps, particularly geographical gaps in that provision. Uh, we've doubled the number of care home places in our block contracts recently. <coughs> Uh, we have seven day working for discharge planning teams in our hospitals. If the rest of the system would only catch up with that, and it's something I have lobbied Jeremy Hunt about, we would be in a much better place. Because uh, our guys are working on a Sunday and the rest of the system isn't there to catch up with them <coughs> and support that. Uh, we've got dedicated worker for self-funders. Uh, to help help those people as well, to, to get them out quickly. Um, and we've uh, improved the discharge to assess uh, system across the system. And of course, importantly, we're also trying to prevent people going in in the first place, and we're doing expansion of our adult, very successful adult early health services, and a lot of work around falls prevention, which is one of the really big reasons people go in in the first place. So I cannot tell you, there is an enormous amount of effort going in across the system, and every single day, uh, there is work going on to deal with delayed transfers of, of care. Um, I think um, that um, what we have set out is to um, show that we are absolutely working over the, the medium term to make sure that we can continue to support the most vulnerable people in our communities, <coughs> that's adult social care and its children's services. Uh, we have um, large challenges. Um, and that's what this, this budget is about. To address some of the issues, you know, the age-old discussion about children's centres, um, the children's centre proposals were absolutely to get support more flexibly into more locations for more families across the geography, not just about Cambridge City Centre, this is about the rural areas. And that is what our proposals will result in, and work is going in there to absolutely deliver that. And I can give you um, endless examples in Sutton, in Ely, where that is absolutely being planned and, and happening. Um, and it's to make it available for more, more people and more families. Uh, I would remind uh, the opposition who are bleating about the potholes, yes, we all know we've got a lot of potholes. Our administration put £2 million extra funding into dealing with potholes, which the opposition voted down, tried to vote down, and voted against. So that's where we are on potholes. Um, around <coughs> transport, um, I, I recognise the points that are being made about rural transport and bus subsidies. However, I would like to remind everybody that that is no longer the remit of this authority. It is the remit, absolutely, of the combined authority, and if more money needs to go into bus services, and they are doing a, a county-wide and Peterborough, across Peterborough and Cambridgeshire review, then that is the way that that needs to happen. We are not in the business of funding services that belong to other authorities. We are not in that place because we've got to protect our own services and run our own services as well. So that's what we need to do with that, and we need to go and make that happen through the combined authority. I. Two years ago, I would have sat here as somebody very heavily involved in Adult Social Care Committee and I would not have had confidence to say, to look my electorate in the mirror and say, I'm going to put up council tracks because I believe we're running the leanest, most efficient authority that we could possibly run. In Adult Social Care, I can hand on heart now say that we have been through absolutely everything with a fine tooth comb and everything that is available to us in the short term for the next financial year has been done and is being done and will continue to be done. We have a medium term plan, we have a long term plan. We have made bold and, and ambitious decisions around some of that. So I am comfortable that I am now in a position in adult social care where I can say that our officers have worked so hard to turn things around and they've kicked absolutely everything, every line of every budget that we can and we're still supporting people, everyone who needs it, everyone who comes through our front door. And I will never have anybody saying that we are cutting frontline services in adult social care because we are absolutely not. And we need to be clear and we need to give our uh, public confidence around that, that we are here for them and to support them. And that will continue. Um, and um, what I think we're clearly facing is a structural deficit in our funding situation. You know, we have, we have 
an issue. We have more demography, more complexity of need coming at us than we can frankly uh, cater for with the current funding situation that we're in. Now that either means two things. You can put up council tax that will not deal with the structural deficit that we have in our funding. We can put it up the maximum for the next five, six, seven years. That is not going to deal with the issue. Therefore we're faced with two things. We either have, we have to go and make the play for fairer funding situation, uh, but what we also have to do is we have to look at much, much more radical transformation uh, of what can be done and in adult social care we're working hard with external consultants for, on a 10 year vision to put adult social care into a sustainable position for the future and they are, we're coming up with some really good ideas around that and we are also working on my pet project which is vital importance to this authority and our residents which is the neighbourhood care pilots where we are looking to radically transform the way that we deal with the most massive bill in this authority which is adult social care and supporting people with social care needs and I fully ask you to engage with that process and get on board with it because we have to make it work together if we're going to sort out the funding issues in, in this authority. So we are taking drastic things. That is coming from, from this administration. I know in children's services, I'll let Simon speak, speak for the committee, that there is huge work going in uh, around, around children's services. We have to keep banging the fairer funding drum. And I want to say to my residents today that I recognise that this decision, if it goes forward at full council, is really, really <coughs> a good message and it will be hard for many people out there. And I do not make light of cups of coffee per week and, and pretending that this isn't going to hurt a lot of people. This is a painful decision for many people out there. Many of my residents uh, who are on agricultural, rural level of wages are struggling to run a car, get, a, get around, around the place. This is not an easy decision. And I want them to know that we haven't taken this decision lightly, that this council, the district council, Citizens Advice Bureau are there to absolutely help people make sure that they are getting uh, any uh, funding help that they can and that they're entitled to to, to help them out. Um, and I think, my final message, uh, I know I've had the floor on time, Steve, sorry, uh, but I think um, it would be absolutely irresponsible to spend the additional money that we are raising if this goes through uh, in the next financial year on, on all of those other things. We absolutely have to prioritise that money and we are planning carefully to do that. And that's what must happen. Thank you very much.